the expectations of us, the consumers, about what we want to achieve from our coins, from our coin buying. What is the point in buying bullion grade coins? Are we after the perfect MS70 Britannia? Is an MS70 Britannia going to be worth a lot of money? Well Backyard Bullion here. Now today we are going to be doing a follow-up on the milk spotting coin video that I did a couple of weeks ago where we were talking about raw mint coins in particular as I had a rather nasty looking batch of Britannias, these Britannias here, all with milk spots all over them. And we talked about whether or not the responsibility lies on the dealers, us the customers or the mints to look to resolve this problem. Should we be boycotting the Royal Mint? It was a very well received video and an interesting one to hear a lot of people's feedback and comments on uh, bullion coins and milk spotting and how many, how many of you have had issues? There are a lot of you out there. So in today's follow-up I want to do a couple of things. I want to talk a little bit about some of the things that you could do to clean milk spots. We've got an eraser here that we can hopefully make some of these look a little better, whether it's even worth doing. The point of bullion coins is that they are just bullion and that's the stance that the Royal Mint has taken. Now I haven't had a formal reply in response to the video that I made criticizing the Royal Mint for their quality on bullion silver and its milking issues. But at the same time, you kind of get their point, like it's bullion, it's not meant to be a perfect coin. Proof coins and brilliant uncirculated coins, so the designation of what type of coin it is, is really important. One of the things though that was brought out from all of the discussions uh, post that video, and um, there was one on the Silver Forum which was really interesting, was about uh, the condition of, in which the coin is described by dealers and a lot of the, in fact nearly every single dealer out there, I only found a couple that don't, will describe these types of coins, these milky bullion coins, they might not describe these particular coins if they are already milked, but in a sealed tube from the mint they'll call that brilliant uncirculated. And that gives this misconception to consumers, to buyers, that it's perfect condition, it's brilliant uncirculated, it's going to be as good as it can be. And it caused a little bit of confusion because the Royal Mint itself has three different categorizations of its striking standards. It's got proof, it's got brilliant uncirculated, and it's got bullion. Now, brilliant uncirculated is basically a slightly better version of bullion, not quite at the proof level. And often when you have a brilliant uncirculated coin, it is of a special edition of a particular year. So you'll get brilliant uncirculated versions of Britannia's each year or various other coins like the, the, for example, some of the 50Ps and, you know, coins, just general circulation coins. They'll make them in brilliant uncirculated precious metal formats. Uh, so it's really confusing. Uh, and a lot of people called out some of the dealers uh, about why they do that. And I actually got a response from the European Mint, which is, it can make complete sense. Any coin as defined by the graders, by uh, NGC, PTGS, all of these that come straight from the mint is described as brilliant uncirculated. If you look at their coin definitions in mint state, it is the state in which it leaves the mint. And it's a common denomination that bullion dealers around the world have used and will use for a very long time that it is brilliant uncirculated. Now, the Royal Mint, of course, have their third designation, which is bullion here. And, um, in a way, that's kind of like a little bit of a cop-out from the Royal Mint. Now, they've obviously not responded to this video. I'm just going to be cleaning some of these in the background, see if it makes any difference with this eraser. Uh, and we'll talk about if, is that even worth doing later in the video. But, um, yeah, you know, the Royal Mint define these as bullion and rather than sort of brilliant and circulated. So there's like a bit of confusion there about whether or not um, A, they should be, uh, B, why the Royal Mint have got that kind of third designation on the coins. Uh, and a fair few uh, dealers and people in the community, I say in the community, I sort of mean the coin selling community that I've reached out to, are kind of in agreement that a lot of the big bullion dealers that have these three, or sorry, mints that have these three different designations of coins, um, basically do so almost as a little bit of an excuse, a get out of jail free clause, so to speak. Let's see, that um, Britannia is looking a little better, I have to say. It's still not perfect by a long stretch, and the light here is shining off it rather glarishly. But so, three designations, and the Royal Mint perhaps using the bullion description as a kind of get out of jail free clause for uh, their, uh, you know, their, their sort of standard of coin that they end up having going out to the mint. And in that particular video I put last time, um, I had been talking about whether or not it was the responsibility of the dealers or us as consumers 
to um, basically kick back to the mints and say, you know, this is not acceptable. You need to be doing better on this. And I think with the designation from mints as bullion and then the dealers as brilliant uncirculated, there needs to be a little bit of a happy medium, I think. There is definitely responsibility on the mints, and I'm going to, again, go back and sort of criticise here to the Royal Mints, say, look, you know, you, you guys need to do better. You need, need to understand and describe better what's potentially going to happen with your coins. But that also is feedback that is needed to be given to the bullion dealers. And uh, they, uh, the European Mint in particular, which we were talking about on the Silver Forum, have agreed with this, and they have also said that in... In the near future, they're currently undergoing a website sort of remodel and revamp. There will be uh, sections completely defined, you know, de or designed to define the standards of coins and what customers should look to expect. And I think that's a really good step. And I hope that the European Mint follow that through and really kind of showcase uh, for their consumers, for their customers, what is going to happen. And I hope a lot of other dealers do that too. There are some out there that, that will do this and they'll have kind of, you know, coin designations uh, on their sort of listings. Uh, I'm just trying to find a really badly milk spot one, see if this um, eraser is actually going to make any kind of tangible difference on them. Um, here's one, it's got a couple of fingerprints and things. So yeah, it's, it's like, I, I really do hope that um, the Royal Mint sort of take notice of the community's feedback because in the last video that we did, it was overwhelmingly that, that, that you know, the vast majority of people would end up with a milky coin from the Royal Mint, from a silver uh, Britannia to the Queen's Beast to the Royal Arms coins, uh, just countless numbers of people saying in those uh, comment sections that they had experienced poor quality uh, milk spotted coins from the Royal Mint, which is a real shame and it, it sort of leads into the disappointment factor, uh, which can be really annoying for a lot of people. But I do think as well that there is a responsibility on dealers to at least be more transparent with their uh, descriptions or at least communicating what to expect from mints uh, about coins and whether or not they are going to be good condition coins. And it's just about managing expectations. I think in any kind of business, in any kind of transaction, managing the expectations of your customers is really, really important. You know, I do it all the time with my uh, hand poured silver. So if I've got a commission for a piece and I know at the moment it's going to take four or five weeks turnaround to get it made, to get it sent up to the Edinburgh Rassi office, to get it hallmarked, to get it finished. And then, of course, we're looking at posting it out to the customers. If I don't say that at the start of the process to my customers and suddenly three weeks have gone by and they've not heard anything, then that's, you know, alarm bells ringing. But if you say something right at the start, if you just accept right at the start, by the way, off camera, I've got a little damp cloth, which I'm just using to rub uh, some of the last little bits of the eraser off. Uh, and I think this is making a difference. I think these coins are looking a lot better than they were before. But my point here is expectations are key. And I think if you manage your customers' expectations uh, realistically and honestly, you will, I think, have a better customer experience end to end. And I still think even though milky coins are, you know, they're, they're a horrible thing to have, uh, bullion grade coins at the end of the day, you know, bullion is bullion and you are just investing in the metal. And that is very obvious from the Royal Mint sort of definitions and designations of what a bullion coin is and should be about and I kind of you know will agree with the with the dealers here and say well the condition of a even a brilliant uncirculated coin as they describe it is going to be as it comes from the mint and it's almost down to the customers to do their own kind of research about what to expect and how uh, you know they should obviously treat and look after their coins inspect their coins when they get them and it's not really the dealers uh, responsibility to be passing on to them perfect specimens of bullion coins. Collectibles, numismatics, proof coins, yeah, that's that's a different kettle of fish altogether. Uh, and just the simple fact that places like the European Mint have been known to offer you know, discounts on future purchases or partial refunds or just generally replacements on coins which are, you know, bullion coins that have disappointed customers, I think is a is a clear indication that they are one of the better sort of dealers for handling this situation out there. Uh, but at the same time, you know, they've taken on board the feedback that they need to improve their sort of descriptions uh, generally to customers and working with their customers to understand the expectations of what they want. So that leads me on to sort of the, the last part here is the expectations of us, the consumers, about 
what we want to achieve from our coins, from our coin buying. What is the point in buying bullion grade coins? Are we after the perfect MS70 Britannia? Is an MS70 Britannia going to be worth a lot of money? Well, the argument would be because all of them out there are so poorly made with milk spot issues or quality control issues that, yeah, a, a, you know, perfect MS70 Britannia is going to be uh, very valuable. But I have seen countless photographs of close to perfect, if not perfect, Britannias in NGC slabs or PCGS slabs. This one here's a, uh, got a good old chunky milk spot on the front there. Let's see if we can get that one out with the eraser. Um, you know, there's a lot of uh, people out there that I've seen sharing photos of these coins in slabs with milk spots that have developed over time. And so you just never know. You just never know. Personally, for me, I really am not bothered about milk spotting. Uh, and a lot of people will feel really strongly against that and they think that, oh, you know, it needs to be perfect if you're buying your silver coins, it's the only way you're going to make money on them. Well, that's just that's just not true because, you know, you see the metal prices increase and you also see what is a fair market value for an ounce of silver. And certainly in a post-Brexit world, we're going to be seeing some really sort of interesting price movements on an ounce of silver. And I think even just having an ounce of milky silver uh, or sort of tone silver, whatever it is that's not perfect, I think it's going to be better than none. And so for me, having just these Britannias will, with milk spots on them, um, I'm really not bothered by them at all. You know, it, for me, it's, it's obviously a disappointment that I didn't have them perfect. And yeah, you could perhaps get an extra 50p to a pound per ounce if you sell them on the second hand market at the other end without milk spots on them. But um, ultimately, I think for me, it's, it's just about having the silver itself, the metal weight, and I've never bought bullion grade silver like this with the expectation of it being a hideaway numismatic. Um, you know, there are coins that you can buy that will come encapsulated from mints around the world that have better chances of holding value because they're already encapsulated and their quality should and will be better. But um, for bullion grade coins, it's just, it, in my opinion, it's not, it's just not worth worrying about. Now that kind of, uh, is a little bit of an odd thing to say if I'm saying at the same time the Royal Mint needs to improve their quality, they need to ensure that they are producing coins which will uh, do better. Now there's a few reasons that um, I think that that still holds true. Uh, the better that your Mint's production and quality control, the more they're going to sell. The less returns, the less negative press they're going to have, the less videos they're going to have on YouTube like this from me and others moaning about Milky Silver and saying, you know, radical headlines on YouTube videos saying, should we boycott the Royal Mint? That's all negative feedback, negative press to the Royal Mint. And I don't shy away from, from admitting that, that that's going to have, you know, an impact on them. And I think it is important for them to produce the best quality coins that they can, even if it is just bullion grade silver. Uh, I do think that's an important step for the Royal Mint to look to take to make sure that they have the best quality stuff. But if you do get a milky coin, you know, you've been seeing me uh, cleaning them with this eraser as we've been going through. And is that, is it worth it? Is it worth doing that? Now, personally, for me, as I said, uh, you know, there's, there's a really vulgar phrase, you can polish something brown, but it's still brown, if that makes sense. It, I know a lot of you'll know what it is, but I want to try and keep this monetization friendly. So, um, you know, for me, these coins, even if I've cleaned them all up perfectly with an eraser or done other little things on them, silver dipping or whatever it might be to get rid of the milk spots, uh, you know, they're still going to be imperfect. They're still going to have these micro scratches on them from uh, the, the, the from the eraser. And, uh, you know, that's just going to leave them to be less than perfect. So even if the, the raw mint sort of, uh, you know, gets stuck in and really kind of sorts their production issues out and makes coins a significantly better uh, quality. It's not going to make too much difference to me because ultimately I buy bullion because it's bullion. I buy it for its weight rather than its numismatic value. And ultimately, if they do improve things, it's going to impact us in terms of cost per unit. Now, there's obviously reasons why they use the methods that they do. And I suspect it's because it's uh, relatively cheap and efficient to churn out thousands of coins per hour in bullion form. If they are going to change the process or change some of the chemicals that they use perhaps during the minting process, which is supposedly where this um, milk spotting issue comes from, some of the res residual uh, sort of chemicals left on the coins during cooling, I believe, um, you know, that's going to be changed. That's going to have additional costs and that's going to perhaps lead to more um, cost for us consumers. And do I want to pay even more for my bullion grade capital gains tax exempt Britannias? 
No, I don't. I just want capital gains tax silver, which is cheap, efficient, and just sits here. I don't really care about it. You know, you can see here, I'm just touching with bare hands, putting fingerprints all over them. It's, you know, cleaning them is arguably next to useless uh, in my books anyway. And you can do it though. Yeah, that's the whole point of this video, you can clean them, you can look after your coins, obviously better than, than I do here, but ultimately for me, it's it's just a little bit redundant. So that's my kind of follow up to the milk spotting uh, video that I made a couple of weeks ago. As I said, I haven't had a formal reply from the Royal Mint about uh, the milk spotting issue and whether or not they have acknowledged that they've got this issue. I have a feeling that the general mentality is it's, it's bullion, so it doesn't matter, um, which is a little bit of a shame. You know, you want to see some of the more special kind of relief items like Queen's Beast series or whatever might come in the future from the Queen's Beast series. You want to see those of the highest quality possible. You want to see the Oriental Border Britannias as high as quality as possible. And I've had a few with big dings and dents on them. Uh, and I do think that having a general kind of quality review system for bullion is going to yield more benefits over time for somewhere like the Royal Mint. But ultimately it's about the willingness to do that. And I don't think at the moment there's too much of an incentive uh, on the Royal Mint to look to do that, which is part of the reason why I've made this and the other video that I made just sort of basically highlighting that there are issues that need to be sorted out. And the Royal Mint is not alone in uh, this issue. There are plenty of mints around the world. Even the Perth Mint gets a lot of mention on things like kangaroos. I have seen a lot of people talking about milk-spotted kangaroos, which is really interesting. And of course, the Canadian Mint has sorted out their problem and their, uh, their maple leaves are gorgeous, lovely, and I love the way they look and feel. And it would be great if we could get something like that here for the Royal Mint. So that's my thoughts. I would still be very intrigued to know what you think about milk spotting, about the quality from places like the Royal Mint, your experiences with milk spotting, whether you clean your coins with an eraser. And I do apologize for any of my American viewers if I've accidentally called it a rubber. It's, uh, that's what we call things here, but I know a rubber, rubber is something very different in the US. So um, yeah, it's, it's like, you know, should you clean your coins? Is it worth it? Is it? If you want to have a slightly more aesthetic look to your own collection, then there's no harm in doing so. But for me, it is just a little bit redundant and I don't bother except here when I'm trying to make a point doing a YouTube video. So let me know your thoughts down in the comment section. If you enjoyed this video, then please let me know by hitting the thumbs up button. That also lets YouTube know that you are enjoying our content. If you have watched to this late stage of a video, a big thank you. You are a honorary member of the Backyard Bullion Rambling Society. And if you do enjoy the channel, and you want to support us, you can check out our memberships where you can become an official paid member of the Backyard Bullion Rambling Society and you can get access to behind the scenes videos. We've just dropped video number three doing a sneaky bit of nighttime silver pouring. So if you want to see that, membership link is down in the description. Otherwise, that is it from me. If you are a unsubscribed viewer, of which we have nearly 75% of all views on the channel coming from unsubscribed viewers, consider hitting that subscribe button because I have a sneaky suspicion there's quite a few of you that have watched multiple videos of mine and not subscribed. So do hit the subscribe if you've uh, enjoyed, want to see more. Like, comment, share and subscribe. Thank you so much. We'll see you on the next one.